What's up everyone? It's Deltron Live, and today we're going to continue our StarCraft II map making tutorial. So currently we're on page 3 of 4 of the trigger module, so let's go ahead and get started. So it looks like we're going to create some points. Uh, points are used by triggers for various purposes. They are used as a reference for spawning units at a point, ordering a unit to move to a spe specific location, creating effects at a specific spot on the map, and much, much more. So Points are visible in the editor, but not in game. That's good to know. So placing and modifying points works the same way as placing it and modifying doodads and uh, units do. Okay. So placing points. First, we need to place a point so that we can use it in a trigger. Okay. So let's open up our StarCraft 2 editor, our beautiful map. So first, we're going to open the terrain module. Let's click on the mountain peaks. And then we're going to select the points layer by pressing P, or you can select the points button. Okay, select the normal point button. This looks like a big up arrow from the row of buttons, so right here. Okay, move your view of the train so you're looking at the farm area. So here's the farm area. And left click to place a point in the center of the farm area. Okay, so we'll place it right here. Uh, so again, if you want to change the name of your point, it's just like regions, uh, select it here, double click, and you can bring up the properties window. Okay, we're just going to leave it, uh, just call it uh, point one. So next section, ping crops point of interest. So now that we have the point, we, we can refer to it in our triggers. So switch back to the trigger module. So press the gears. And then select the discover objective a trigger. Okay. So now we want to create a new action. So just control R. And this action is going to be uh, create ping facing angle. Okay. And let's go ahead and move this to, to the end of our triggers uh, or action setup. Okay. For So for the positioned value, uh, select the point we just used, so that should be under the value point one. Okay, so then for the model value, select ping objective, or you can select ping boss. So if you just type ping in here, uh, you can see all the ping models available. Uh, let's just do the ping objective. Okay. Okay, set the color to any value that looks good. Leaving it black will cause the ping to be hidden since the unexplored area of the mini map where the ping is already black. So let's go ahead and let's change this to green. Uh, light green. So easy to see on, on the black background. Press OK. And then for a duration value, you can set this to zero. So if you set it to zero, it will cause the ping to stay forever or until we remove the ping with the trigger actions. So if you just, this shows where the objective is, and that's basically uh, to show it forever so the player will always know uh, where the objective is. Okay, when the objective is created, the ping will appear and let the player know where he is supposed to go. Where he or she is supposed to go. Start locations and player properties. So start locations are points with special properties and melee maps. When making melee maps, the player's town hall and workers are created at start locations and where the player's camera is centered at the start of the game. So since we're not doing a melee map, we have to uh, do this manually. So we're going to go ahead and place a start location right on top of players one units. So go ahead and close the trigger module. Go on the mini map uh, where your units are. So let's go ahead and set start location uh, right here, kind of next to your, your units. Okay, so we're going to use this in a trigger in the next section to center the camera on this point when the map starts. So go ahead and place down start locations for the computer players, which are 2, 3, and 4. Let's just go ahead and put them here. doesn't matter too much uh, for this map where you put them. 
So next we're going to set up some player properties for units and the computer's units. Uh, we can modify each player's color, decals, race, and starting location in the player properties window. So to get to that window, go to map and then player properties. Okay, and then we're going to set the following properties. So basically the only things we're going to change are the starting locations. So click on player 1, start location 1, player 2, start location 2, player 3, and you guys get the idea. Lastly, the Zerg will be start location 4. Okay, press OK. So you can see that adding the start locations for AI players allows us to enable um, it, uh, it automatically changed the colors of these start locations as well to the player colors. So adding these start locations also allows us to enable the campaign IA, AI for all those players. Um, so enabling the campaign AI is going to make it so that all those bird Zerg units will automatically unburrow when our units get close. Okay, but we're going to cover that in a little bit. Um, once we set up our computer players with start location values, you'll also notice the start location points we place on the map turn the color of the associated player, which, yeah, I already, I already said that. Okay, now we're going to do a map initialization trigger. So in this section, we're going to create a map initialization trigger. Uh, this runs when the map finishes loading and sets a number of different game options and setting when you first start the mission. So these triggers are going to set the player's units to be allies with our colonists so they don't they stop attacking us <laughs> and with the military outpost folks. Uh, it's also going to set the position of the camera when the mission starts and turn on our objectives. So let's create a folder to hold all these triggers uh, like we've been doing with all of, our, all of our other triggers. So go ahead, go back to the triggers, right click, new folder, uh, move it out uh, let's go ahead and move it to the top, and let's call this map initialization. Okay. Now to alliances. Uh, so to stop the players, our Terran players, from killing each other, uh, we need to set players one, two, and three to be allies. So to do this, let's create a trigger and the the folder we just created and let's call this alliances okay create an event it's going to be a map initialization there are no conditions and then for actions i'm going to set a set alliance action Set Alliance. Set the source to player one and then target to player two. So player one and player two are allies. And then for Alliance settings, we don't want them to have shared vision. We just want it to, them to be allies. So this way we're gonna be allies with player two, but we won't see what they see. Only our units are gonna reveal the map, okay? So we're going to create another set alliance action. So just copy and paste this. Uh, this is going to be um, between ourself, player one, and player three. And again, just ally. So we're going to create one more alliance. Uh, this is going to be between player two and three. So these are the co two computer Terran players, uh, just in case they interact with each other, uh, they won't attack each other. So next section we're going to turn the campaign AI on so the Zerg units automatically unburrow when enemy units enter, get close to them. So since we place a number of other Zerg units on the map, uh, we have some Zerglings, Roaches, Hydralis. Uh, however, currently if we walk our units around the map, uh, the only thing we're going to be able to fight is the Ultralisk. Uh, because we already made a trigger to make it unburrow. So all the other burrowed units are going to stay burrowed. So 
Uh, we could make a trigger to unburrow each of these units one by one, uh, but instead, a lot easier is to just turn on the campaign AI, and then all these burrowed enemies units will automatically unburrow when our units get close. So we're going to create a new trigger in the same folder map initialization, and we're going to call this uh, start campaign. Campaign AI. Okay, so create an event map initialization. So it starts when the map initializes. No, no conditions, and then actions. It's just it's a search start campaign AI or player, and then set the player to player four, which is the Terran. Zerg. I mean, sorry, the computer Zerg play. That's the new race, Terran Zerg. Uh, well, I guess infested Terrans, yeah. Anyways, so when the map starts, we're going to move our camera view to center on our units and also fade in from black for dramatic effect. Our new trigger will be called camera. Okay, so let's just go ahead. In the same folder, just call this camera. Again, map initialize. No conditions. Then actions. We're going to add a pan camera. Set the point. To start location one, that's going to be our player that we set up already. Uh, player one, player one is is uh, player controlled by the uh, the unit is controlled by the player. Sorry. Uh, okay, so then uh, we're going to set the duration to zero. This is going to make it so the camera will cut to our start location right when the map starts. Okay, and then we're going to add in a fade in out action. So fade in out. So we're going to set the fade in value to fade out. Set the duration to zero. And then the color should be black. So this is going to make it so that the game starts with a black screen, black screen allowing us to fade in. So now to actually fade in, let's create um, another action. Just copy and paste the last one you did. Instead of fade out, we're going to have it fade in. And it's going to last two seconds. OK, in the same black color. Okay, and that's it. Let's uh, save this and test. So let's jump into the game and see how it works. So what should happen when the game starts, we should be allied with player two and three, so they're not attacking us anymore. And you can see it faded. Uh, it also faded in from a black screen. What's up? You also see that the point that we created and the farm showed up as the uh, to show where the main objective is. What's the plan? And yeah, so you let's just check. Everyone is allied to us. Raiders roll. You can break it down. Okay. Sell me. Everything looks good. Time to map. So now we just need to check to make sure the Talk the Zerg me. units unburrow when we get close Sounds to them. like a plan. And yeah, perfect. And our allied units are Time to man up. enemies. Raiders the team Zerg. What's the plan? What's up? Sounds like okay. Time to man up. Raiders roll. Shocks. Let's just go through this. Sell me. So this is the end of the What's tutorial, up? pretty much. I'll, I'll just finish me. this mission for like completion's sake. But, Sell me. And there are 
extra units. Talk to me. Raiders Let's roll. just go ahead and finish this. You can count on me. Time to man up. So again, What's the plan? as I'm doing these tutorials, Sounds I know they're like very basic, and I'm going fairly slow, but I feel like this is going to be a good learning experience up. for someone that's completely new to the editor, like I am. So it's been really helpful so far. I've gone from pretty much not knowing anything, uh, knowing quite a bit, uh, all but, although very basic stuff, but you got to start somewhere. Okay. So again, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Hope this has been helpful. And take it easy, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye.